up there in TV land, this is Alex Androsik, Adult Services Director at Penyan Public Library. And today I would like to tackle a topic I've gotten some questions on over the years and get into the nitty gritty of cord cutting or cable cutting, whatever you wanna call it. Um, basically just the uh, process of separating yourself from cable companies, getting your TV in different ways. So let's get to it. What goes into successfully cutting the cord? So before we get into some of those details, what's the goal of cable cutting, cord cutting? Um, it might be to end your expensive relationship with a cable company while maintaining access to most of the content you want. It might be achieving a la carte programming. Uh, maybe for someone else, there might be some different reasons, but those seem to be the two big reasons that come up in discussions of this topic. Um, a lot of people have uh, a hard time justifying paying for a cable subscription that uh, can be very expensive every month and give you access to hundreds of channels of which you watch a tiny fraction. And so you have here a, uh, a little guy representing the cable companies looking very satisfied with themselves. And then uh, over here on the other side, somebody who has gotten through the cable cutting process, the cord cutting process, and is still amazed by all of the content that he wants that he can still get. So if I'm missing anything, let me know what other reasons you might have for cable cutting in the comments to this video. Uh, it might be helpful to talk a little bit about the vocabulary of cord cutting. Uh, there might be some, some terminology and discussions of this topic that not everyone is familiar with, so we'll get into a few of these. First of all, we speak of streaming services. So a streaming service is an inter internet-based entertainment content provider like Netflix or Hulu. Um, and that leads to the question of what does it mean to stream, uh, the verb to stream. And this is using the internet to view entertainment content, whether on a TV, computer, or other device. So that's as opposed to the traditional cable model um, where you have, um, you know, the information is coming to you through that dedicated cable, that's how it gets its name, um, or television over the air. This is getting all of your television type entertainment, your movies and all that stuff uh, through the internet. Um, you might hear people speak in terms of channels in this context, in the context of cable cutting. This is just another term for st a streaming service. It's sort of just used by analogy to what we're used to thinking of. You change channels from NBC to ABC to Sci-Fi to Food Network. Um, it's similar to how we speak of Netflix and Hulu, though there are clearly some differences in how that works. You might also hear about apps in a variety of contexts. Uh, and in this context, it's a computer program that provides access to a streaming service on a given device. That could be your computer, it could be your television. Um, and an example would be the Netflix app or the Hulu app. App is just the currently most uh, accepted term for program. Um, and that comes from um, we're sort of in the handheld device era of how we classify and terminologize uh, everything that we do online. Uh, so the term that is current uh, in that context is app. So it just gets applied across the board. Uh, and so what's a smart TV? This is a television set incorporating access to the internet and streaming services into its basic functioning. So not like your old fashioned TVs, um, that wouldn't work for any of this. Uh, most TVs nowadays are smart TVs and have um, what you need to uh, view content on the web built right in. Um, and then there is the verb to cast. And this might be if you uh, have a TV that isn't quite the most recent and you don't have a smart TV, you can transmit streaming content from your device to a TV. And you can do that with something called a media hub, uh, which is a content streaming device that converts a standard TV into a smart TV and or allows for casting from a computing device. So some examples of this are Roku or Chromecast. All right, so if we're getting into the process of how to go about cable cutting, you need to start by thinking about the hardware you need or else you will not get very far. So you need 
either a smart TV, like I said, a uh, TV set with uh, streaming capability incorporated into it. And as I said, also most TVs you buy today will be smart. Or if you don't have a smart TV, you can go for a media hub, which comes in a small stick version, such as the Roku, Chromecast, or Amazon Fire, or larger set-top versions like the Amazon Fire TV Cube and the Apple TV. Um, and honestly, the difference between those two options, um, I'm not super clear on it. I, I read you can expect some more um, support services and, and perhaps uh, higher quality uh, images with the set-top version. Um, but I've always used a stick version and I'm very happy with how it works. The stick versions are so simple, you don't really need much in the way of additional support. Um, either way, uh, using a media hub uh, usually plugs into your TV by a USB. Um, and, and most TVs, even older ones that are not smart TVs, do come with USB ports so you can plug media hubs right into them. And on top of these two options, you will want good high speed internet. Um, that is sort of the catch 22 of this. Uh, you'll want high speed broadband or else um, the experience of watching TV or movies over the internet will not be a great one. It takes a lot of data to, uh, to watch a movie or a television show uh, clearly, crisply, cleanly and all that stuff. Um, and that's a little bit annoying because that means, you know, most of the time our internet providers are the same as our cable providers. So you're probably not going to be able to completely cut off your relationship with whatever um, provider is available in your area, but you can reduce uh, the costs and reduce that relationship significantly. So then we get into the process itself. And so you want to start by taking stock of what you watch. Um, you're going to want to be thinking about what shows you can't miss and what shows you can live without. List them out. Make you know, take out a scratch pad and write everything down and rate them. You know, one through three. One is I can dump this if I need to. Three is I absolutely need to watch this every week or whenever it airs. And then two would be sort of like it'd be nice to have it, um, but if I have to sacrifice it, that is okay. Um, ask yourself, are you willing to hold off on some shows until well after they originally air? In most streaming contexts, in terms of like content that appears on a traditional network or cable station that you are going to be watching via streaming, usually those become available the next day. So not too much of a lag between when they originally air and when you will have uh, the ability to watch them. And of course, in the case of shows that originate on streaming services like on Netflix or Hulu, those are just there for you to binge whenever you want to. So there's not really much of a concern about um, when you get to view them. But some shows um, maybe that you want to keep up with but aren't available um, um, among the streaming services you opt for, um, you might have to consider alternate ways to view them, perhaps long after they originally air, such as when they come out on DVD, for instance. Um, and just as a little um, plug for, <laughs> for the library, you know, it might be worth dropping a certain show, but get the DVDs at the library a year later or six months later, um, whenever they come out. And uh, most popular shows that you would want to view, I can guarantee somebody in our library system will probably have it. The reality is you probably can't have everything you want when you want it. If your goal is to save some money, that means that you're probably not going to be getting a subscription to every single streaming service known to humanity, and that means some content will not be available to you. Um, so those shows that you only rate one star, you know, you think, well, I can live without this, uh, and even some of the two star shows, you probably won't be able to get them. Even some of the three star shows, if it comes down to, you know, one show you really love is only, is available on one streaming service, and it's the only show on that streaming service you would watch, is it worth it to pay whatever that might be a month to get access to that one show? Maybe, maybe not. You've got to consider that. And the good news is you can be open to finding new content to replace some of what you sacrificed 
and find new content on maybe that channel where you just think, gosh, you know what? I really need to see the new Game of Thrones spinoffs that are going to be coming out. I don't really care about anything else on HBO, but okay, I'll spring for HBO and have that one show that I want. And maybe along the way you discover, oh, hey, this, this Westworld show is pretty cool. And hey, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, The Leftovers is a pretty good show. You might find some things that make it worthwhile to, to get that one streaming service. And you might find content that, uh, you know, you replace what you are sacrificing. For me, I used to watch uh, all the Food Network cooking competition shows. But when it came time for me to decide you know, what am I going to keep access to when I cut the cord here? Uh, Food Network wasn't one of the things I could make work. So I had to, you know, drop my cooking competitions. Unfortunate, I could live with it. I'd probably rate most of them those one or two stars. Um, but the good news is there are cooking competitions on the streaming services I did subscribe to. So that's when I became a big fan of the great uh, British cook, uh, bake off, big British cook off, whatever they call it, <laughs> the baking show. Um, so I found some cooking competitions to fill that gap, uh, in my, uh, in my repertoire. All right. Next, you're going to want to research and add channels or add streaming services. So think about this. You've made your list of what you can't live without and what you uh, can get away with not seeing. What combination of streaming services gets you the most of the content you can't live without? And will the cost start to look similar to what you were paying for cable? Um, so that's, that's sort of the trade-off you wanna be careful of. All this is moot if you're paying as much as or more than you were paying for cable. Um, so you're gonna wanna you know, be a little bit um, uh, careful with your selections. You're not going to want to subscribe to every streaming service under the sun. Um, and you're going to want to keep track, you know, as those costs add up, what are you getting at? What is the max you want to pay for monthly streaming subscriptions? Um, look at those things carefully. Um, in my opinion, and this is not a advertisement, I'm not advocating that you go and, and get these, but just as an observation of what is sort of the essential um, streaming services that you know you should probably have in your quiver would be Netflix, which is the leader sort of in this entire um, this entire streaming revolution, and it's a pioneer in in having original premium content available to subscribers as well as its catalog of, um, of existing television and movies and Hulu, which has a vast selection of currently airing shows. Um, a lot of the shows that you see on some of the major networks, especially um, NBC, ABC, and Fox, those are all, for the most part, available the day after they would air on traditional television, and they have their own growing library of original content. Um, and you should know that several of these, the apps to access these shows will probably come preloaded on a smart TV or when you first plug in your media hub, others you'll have to add manually. So, you know, it, it, it bears just kind of laying this out uh, clearly. Um, for each of these streaming services, you choose at least the ones that are not free, and there are some free ones, but for the paid subscriptions, Yes, you'll have to subscribe to them. You might want to do that on your computer. You just go to netflix.com, hulu.com, and they have a very simple, straightforward um, process to register for those monthly subscriptions. They make it pretty clear because they, they want your money. Um, and then you go to your television set, uh, if you're going to be watching on your, on your smart TV or your media hub, and you go and you log into those subscriptions um, on your television. And there are a variety of ways that happens. Sometimes when you finish your subscription process, it'll give you a link to click and that activates your TV. Sometimes they'll give you like a barcode to scan with your phone and that will make things happen. Other times you can simply click on say Netflix, whatever it is, and there's a login option and you just use your, you know, you use your remote control to very arduously plug in your email address and your password and then you're in. The good news is you don't have to do that every time, once you do it once, that usually is good enough and you are in for the duration. Um, and once you have your smart TV set up or your media hub set up and you wanna start 
adding those apps to your menu of options, there's usually a version of an app store, just like on your smartphone or on your tablet, you go there, you know, you, you know, the criterion channel isn't a default app on most smart TVs, but if that's one you want to subscribe to, you go and find that in your TV or media hubs uh, app store. And if that part's unclear, I know that's probably the, the nitty gritty part of, of this whole process. Feel free to leave questions in the comments or you can call the library and talk to me. And yes, you do want to think about the cost of all this. Um, I'm not giving any specific numbers here because they do vary um, and your it will vary depending on your priorities and how many channels you want to subscribe to. Um, and you know, if something is $11.99 today, it might be $12.99 next month, and it might be $10.99 the month after that. So it does vary. So just kind of keep track of what each subscription service is costing you as you go, add it all up, see if it is successfully fulfilling that goal of, you know, you're getting your content and spending less money than you would with a traditional cable subscription. So what all is out there? And the answer really is so much. Um, this is going to be a personal choice for everyone about what you want to have available to you. Um, just to give you some idea of the big names, you know, you've got your HBO Max, which is obviously all that HBO content, your Game of Thrones and that kind of thing. Um, Disney Plus, if you're into the Disney movies or any of the content that the media behemoth that is Disney has been snapping up. Um, that is something that you're going to want to consider adding, and that includes um, all the Marvel movies, all of the Star Wars movies, that kind of thing. Um, Apple TV, you know, you might think, why is Apple making television? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. The answer is that they can, and it will make them money, so they're going to do it. Um, and the reality is that um, you know, because of the cachet of some of these companies like Apple and Amazon that have nothing to do with, uh, with, with media, but they have sort of a cultural or social resonance. Um, these are becoming sort of the, uh, the, the press, premier prestige formats for creators to go out there and sign these contracts and create um, important television, you know, with capital I important and things like that. Um, so for instance, if there are any sci-fi fans out there, Apple TV is producing uh, a TV series based on Isaac Asimov's foundation novels. Um, and if you are a science fiction fan that just pinged for you and you're either uh, really excited about that or think that it's a sacrilege, <laughs> they're trying to make a TV show about it. If you're not a sci-fi fan, you don't know what, you know what I'm talking about and that's okay. Um, but that's sort of the idea. And it only just occurs to me now, like it might seem strange for, you know, hey, it's, it's a computer company. It's a, it's a phone company. Now they're making, they're making prestige TV. Um, if you think back to the early days of television and even before that in radio, I guess it was, you know, the, uh, you know, the Nestle chocolate radio hour <laughs> and things like that. Uh, I know it's a little bit different. That's more like sponsorship and things like that. But all of these media conglomerates, these mega, mega companies that make whatever, they're all going to get into entertainment eventually. And so that's what we see happening here. So anyway, down the list here, you've got your Amazon, you've got Paramount Plus, which is all that CBS content. Um, and if you're interested, that's where Star Trek content lives. Uh, Peacock is the brand new, uh, well, not super brand new, but relatively recent. Uh, streaming service specifically for NBC. And a lot of times, you know, NBC, okay, sure, they have all the NBC shows you want to watch. A lot of that stuff, because of the way uh, they've worked out agreements and things like that, they might appear on, on multiple of these streaming services at once. So yes, Peacock is sort of the hub for all things NBC, past and present, but you can also get current NBC shows on, uh, on Hulu, for example. So those are the big names. Um, then it, whatever niche you might be into, there is going to be something available for you in the realm of streaming. Uh, Discovery Plus is sort of all those um, lifestyle shows you might be interested in. There's those Food Network shows that I have neglected to, uh, to watch for the past few years. Um, your HGTV, things like that. Uh, CW is basically just an app version of the CW channel. It's free, which is wonderful. Um, sort of focused at the at the teen demographic, so a lot of sort of dramatic <laughs> uh, dramatic type shows uh, focusing on young people. 
Um, if you're into superheroes, it's got the, the, the DC Arrowverse shows with Flash and Batwoman and people like that. Uh, and it's free, so that's wonderful. Criterion is like classic movies, foreign movies. If you think of like the thousand and one movies that everyone needs to see to be a culturally competent human being, they're on Criterion. Shudder uh, is known as Netflix for horror um, because it is just all kinds of streaming horror content, both original and legacy. And then things like Broadway HD, which literally streams um, high definition Broadway, which um, we're all probably missing a lot right now since things have been shut down. Uh, this is just a tiny sampling of, of what's available out there. Explore those app stores. There's so much uh, to discover. And then I'll just uh, indicate a website called justwatch.com. If there is a specific show or movie you're interested in and you're wondering if it's available out there somewhere, go to justwatch.com, plug it into the search bar on the top of the page, and it will tell you, um, you know, Gilligan's Island is available on streaming platforms X, Y, and Z. It's available here with a subscription. It's available here for free because they have ads, yada, yada, yada. So it works great with, with movies. Um, so that is just something to have in your back pocket. Um, a little bit more on the process. Look for deals. Um, bundles are rad. Free trials are rad. Always free apps are rad. It's rad. Um, what I mean by bundles, uh, a lot of times as these companies work together, um, they find ways to uh, save you a little bit of money by, by grouping subscriptions. So for instance, I started off with just a Netflix and a Hulu account, and that's all I had. Um, and I could have gone and started adding things like HBO Max. When Disney Plus came out, I could have added Disney Plus as separate subscriptions. Um, but as it turned out, Hulu had deals with them so that I could add on access to those two services as um, additions to my Hulu account at steep discounts. So now I've got my Hulu account that I pay some amount of money for. It's like $16.99 a month or something. That includes, it's a little bit bumped up from my original uh, plan, but it includes unfettered access to HBO Max and to Disney+. Plus. If I'd gotten those two services separately, I would be tripling the amount of money I pay because they're bundled. It's, it, uh, it comes uh, together really nicely. Uh, most of these services will offer a free trial, make good use of those. So for instance, if you heard a lot about the, the Picard TV show, Captain, Captain Picard from Star Trek, um, Paramount Plus put out a show all about him last year. Um, and if that intrigues you, but you're not sure you want to commit to having Paramount Plus for all time, you can uh, go in and see if they have a free trial going, um, get an account and yes, they will ask for your credit card information up front, but then they give you like a month free. You can watch Picard and then cancel it and you won't get charged. Or maybe by the time you're done with Picard, you think, you know what, I liked this. I see there's some other content on this service that I might wanna watch. There's some other Star Trek stuff. Maybe I'll keep it. That's how they get you. But if you're strong, uh, you can just get what you want and cut and run. Um, and usually there are limitations on that, although every once in a while you might find a glitch that'll let you keep signing up for those over and over again. You didn't hear it here. All right, what's next in the process? Remain ever vigilant. Stuff changes all the time. Content is added, removed, and moved. Uh, case in point, I was watching The West Wing on Netflix. I got up to season three or so. And then it got removed from Netflix, but put onto HBO Max, which by that point I had that subscription to through my Hulu bundle. So I didn't, I didn't lose it, but for a second I thought I did. Um, so usually when something is removed from a service, that's, you know, usually it's not disappearing for good. You know, it's not like they're retiring it forever. Usually it's gone somewhere else. So you might have to do some hunting. If you're lucky, it'll end up on a service you've already got a subscription to. If not, you might have to wait around until it becomes available to you again somehow. Offers come and go, deals come and go, prices rise and fall. You just gotta keep on track and there will be new services um, and old services that meet ignominious ends. Some people ask, what about local news? This is a big deal uh, to some people. 
Um, here's where it, it's, <laughs> it gets a little complicated. And I understand that around here, this first option is not necessarily something that works, but it is still possible to get local programming over the air using an antenna. So perhaps you live in a part of our county where the internet access is not great. You don't have high speed broadband available to you. Maybe you can get some things over antennas. And these aren't antennas like the old school giant, you know, metal scaffolding that attaches to your rooftop. These are more like little computer peripherals that sit next to your TV or you stick them up in your window and they will absorb those uh, over the air signals and put them on your television. I was told that doesn't work super well around here. We might just be too far from, um, you know, the big centers, the big, uh, you know, Rochester and Buffalo and places like that for that to be possible. Um, so another option is to subscribe to a live TV streaming service. So these other streaming services we've been talking about are more the uh, content on demand streaming services. Uh, but there are streaming services that offer streaming live television. I have listed some here. The trouble with this is once you subscribe to one of these, you're getting pretty close to what you might have been spending on uh, cable. Uh, maybe it'll still shave a few dollars off for you depending on the plan. And if some of that, uh, that content like local news is really important to you, it might be worth it. And what about sports? Um, from what I have found, that's a wipeout for the most part. Um, it is complicated and depending on different arrangements between different leagues, um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's not a lot of content available when you probably want to be watching it, which is more or less live. You probably don't want to be watching the Super Bowl the, the next day. Um, so that's a little bit tricky. It's not impossible to find, but there doesn't seem to be a great deal of consistency. Um, I did notice that among the things that I could have bundled with my Hulu account was some kind of ESPN deal. I'm not a sports fan. I did not look into it. I don't know if it was live ESPN or if it would have been a delayed ESPN. I don't know if that offer is even still there. Um, but again, it's one of these things where you're going to want to remain vigilant and see what becomes available. And even just while I was researching this uh, presentation, I found articles dating back several years um, that, you know, one would say like, good news, uh, sports are becoming easier to access on streaming services, followed by bad news for sports fans on streaming services. And we just kind of alternate like that. Um, so a lot of mixed information, a lot of things coming and going rising and falling, uh, not uh, super um, comforting for the sports fans out there. Got some additional resources for you here. I am, uh, I've got these all on a document that I'm gonna share in the comments of this recording. So you don't have to jot these down right now. Um, I, will, I will make sure that is available to you. And that's pretty much the end of things here. Um, I hope I didn't go too fast or, or, or glance over anything that, uh, that you needed to know. But if so, you can certainly leave me a comment and you can also contact the library. Our phone number is 315-536-6114 if you wanna do it that way. Or you can email me at info at pypl.org. That's info at pypl.org. And uh, if you're thinking about, you know, cutting the cord, I hope this has been helpful and I wish you luck in that endeavor. Uh, we will see you again real soon. Good night.